Okay, so in this video, we're actually going to take our previous Power Automate process that sent an email as a Word document and walk through the steps on how you can do this, receive an email with the document instead of being a Word document, is a PDF and that comes over with all of the tokens and the formatting. So that's what we're doing in this session. Let's get started. <laughs> Okay, so in this video, we're actually going to talk about how do you convert the Word document into a PDF. Now, I'm actually coming to you live from my car studio. Uh, don't worry, I'm not driving. Uh, I am parked. But uh, this is probably because, uh, you know, the holidays and a lot of people, uh, it's probably the best place to go to where it's quiet. And I'm actually, I'm not interrupting others because uh, I can be, uh, ten, I tend to be pretty loud uh, during these uh, sessions. Okay, so if you look at the uh, Power Automate that we currently have, again, this is a multi-step approval process. So I need to go to the final approval. And this is what we did in the last video. So, you know, we had the template. And uh, based on the template, we create a file based on the content of that template. Then we updated the metadata. That's what made our template dynamic, you know, once we put those tokens in. And then we get the file. This is important because once you do the update to the properties, it's important to get the latest so that way you merge. And actually, this is where we're going to start. Now, to use standard connectors, when you're converting to PDF, you have to do that conversion in OneDrive. For whatever reason, they only have that uh, capability in OneDrive. So what we're going to do, we're just going to create a file, and we have to create it in OneDrive, right? So we just say, okay, create a file. It's going to ask for the path. And basically, what this is going to do, the, the, the account that you have, and then I have to put my forward whack in front of that. For well, some reason, it wouldn't let me type that. But anyway, so once we get the name, so now let's go ahead and get the name. So basically, we can just grab the name from from the update property step. So right, so right here where we do update files properties, uh, we can just grab the file name from there. And it's going to be file name with extension. Okay, and then the content we're just going to get from the get file uh, method here, which is this one here, which is going to give us the latest and greatest with the R template and the custom metadata merged together. Okay, so let me just rename this to create temp OD for OneDrive file, and these are our temporary files. And then from here, you can just do your PDF conversion. So just do convert. And again, because this has to be in OneDrive, we're making sure that we're doing this um, from, from within OneDrive. We're only specifying the file from within OneDrive. So the file that we created is the ID that we need to grab. So that create temp file. And then here's the conversion option. And it, it looks like, I don't know if you can arbitrarily just come in here and put in like xls or you know for excel or if you have to put it in for powerpoint but for our intents and purposes we're just going to do pdf and basically once you do that when it comes to your email when you send the attachment you really just want to change this name and then the guts of the content instead of having that coming from our word document we're going to have it pull from the converted file so we can just kind of do that. And for the most part, you're done. That's really all you need. Now, I do a little bit extra. So what I do, I actually take the file that gets created and then move a copy over to my my uh, my uh, document library in SharePoint that I'm keeping all of these receipts. And this is, you know, just from an admin perspective, if you have to manually resend the receipt or whatever the case may be, you kind of have it. Uh, already converted in one file and ready to go. So here I'm going to just do uh, create file. And then the site address is just going to be where I have my request form. And then as far as the folder path, I can actually drill to it. Uh, we did parking lot receipts. 
and then for the file name we're just going to use the same file name that we had from let's see I think update properties no 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 this is going to be PDF right so you want to do the file name for the conversion so that convert file so the convert to PDF and then the content you want to get from that conversion as well so that's going to be your PDF and really I'm just going to store it here so I'm going to just say uh, create a PDF file in SP for SharePoint library okay now this is again this is extra just because I want a copy of it stored in the SharePoint library but this right here is actually going to send the guts of that so now if we test this guy out so let's just save this all I think the only biggest takeaway for here is just understanding that you have to do this in OneDrive. Once, once you understand that piece, it's really, really straightforward. Okay, so now what we're going to do, let's just fire up our app. And I think I have all my approvers in place. So this is going to fire up. Let's go batch number. Let's just do this current date. I have to do NOR and Tesla Charger. And then I'm going to just arbitrarily select a make and model. All right, so now that's going to go. All right, so if I go to my li uh, library here, it just shows that the request has been received. Then if I go to my approver, uh, this is going to show me that my approver received the notification. Just have them approve it. And this is, again, this is just approving my lot. And then once the lot approver does their thing then what's going to happen I should get an email notification here for my spot approver this is the one that's going to actually authorize me to use the charger within that parking lot structure all right so once I have that done I can go back to uh, the original requester which is going to be this guy here and then now I should receive an uh, email notification with the PDF attached if if we did everything right and there I didn't fat finger something so let's just see what happens so uh, I, I think from the previous emails the, the question was can we do this with uh, images and that's actually something I need to take a look at okay so here we go uh, there we are just like that so really it's just a very very two-step process very simple and like I said you probably want to do a cleanup uh, process to where you're deleting all the temporary files that you created so if we look at this a little bit closely if I kind of go into here there's a couple things I want to highlight uh, that I think you should probably take a look at one uh, clean up the temporary files as I mentioned before so like this create file it's a temporary file this create file is a temporary file and the only one that we really want to maintain is is this guy here and then of course we're sending the uh, attachment so I would recommend doing the delete process to clean these up that's just kind of the way you don't have digital junk just you know hanging around because these are things every request is going to create a file right the other thing to be aware of is that if you take a look at the OneDrive where we actually are creating the, the temporary file and storing that that one drive is associated to um, the service account the account that's used in the connector so what do I mean by that so when I go into this guy here which says temp file uh, create that temp OD file for the PDF uh, before you do the PDF conversion you notice this account that I have here under my connections that's the one drive that it's going to use so if I go to this persona here let's just go to uh, Keelan so if I go to this persona here as the current user and put in the same request as Keelan I wouldn't this the temporary file is not stored inside of Keelan's one drive it's only going to be the one drive of the account that is specified in the connector and that's one of the things to, to be aware of because um, whatever service account that you're using you want to make sure that that service account is licensed and has a OneDrive and all this other good stuff the other thing is is that if you're an app maker and by default it's going to use your credentials 
uh, as the connector unless you explicitly specify a different account you as the app maker is going to be using your OneDrive for all of these PDFs and that's a little bit fragile right because if you leave the organization or if your AD account gets deactivated for whatever reason this whole process uh, locks right and you know it, it, it kind of blocks you so you know just understand that when you start to create files and up doing update properties or update actions or any of this stuff it's doing all of that under the credentials or under the context of the account that's specified for those connectors and again that's just one of those things to be aware of because that could be a good thing in the event of like this one drive i am um, I don't have to give everyone access to do this, right? Because it's going to be done in the context of that account. So that's the only account that need access, re read, write access to this OneDrive. And also for the libraries to where you're doing these creates, right? And on the SharePoint side, only this account requires read, write access. Everyone else can just have read access uh, or no access at all if you don't even want them to see those PDFs that are stored in that library. So, again, just understanding the context of the different accounts and how that works uh, that will actually um, allow you to either one, apply the right security posture on your process, and then two, understand where your licensing requirements and where all your activities are, are going to lie and also identify if you have any vulnerabilities meaning that you're specifying um, named accounts versus service accounts and then if that named account gets deactivated for whatever reason your whole process comes to a halt all right so that's it for this video if there's any questions i'll see you in the comment sections in the next video i think we're going to do an automated process a batch process. How do you do batch processes with Power Automate? All right, talk to you soon.